Right now, we're looking at Earth from space. Every person who has ever lived, every civilization, every moment of human history, all contained on this single world. But today, we're traveling 10 billion light years across the universe to reach Tun 618, one of the most massive black holes ever discovered. By using this simulation, we can travel faster than light itself. There's our sun, the star that has kept life going on Earth for millions of years. But out here, it's just one among hundreds of billions of others. Each one of these stars likely has planets orbiting it. Rocky worlds, gas giants, frozen moons. Some of these systems might even have life, although we'll never know. Tun 618 lies over 10 billion light years from Earth. The light we see from it today began its journey when the universe was only 3 billion years old, when Earth had just formed and life didn't yet exist. That glowing band of light ahead is the center of the Milky Way, where hundreds of millions of stars orbit in a dense cluster. At the center sits Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. It weighs about four million times the mass of our sun. However, Tun 618 weighs up to 66 billion solar masses. That's more than 15,000 times heavier than the black hole right there at our galaxy's center. Tun 618 doesn't exist in the Milky Way. It lies far beyond our entire local group of galaxies, far beyond Andromeda, in a region of space that requires powerful telescopes just to see. It's incredible to think that everything humanity has ever known exists within this structure. A barred spiral galaxy stretching 100,000 light years across. This is intergalactic space, the void between galaxies. No stars exist out here, only the faint glow of distant galaxies scattered across the void. The Milky Way is now just one galaxy among billions of others. From out here, it's easy to forget that this single spiral contains everything we've ever known. Our solar system, every star we've ever named, every planet we've ever discovered, all contained within that pale structure. But we're only just beginning our journey. Tun 618 lies billions of light years further ahead. The Milky Way is now behind us. Every second, we're crossing millions of light years. Light would take millions of years to cover the same distance. These points of light passing by aren't stars. They're galaxies. Each one contains hundreds of billions of stars planets, and possibly life forms we'll never encounter. This is what most of the universe actually looks like. Empty space, intergalactic voids stretching between distant galaxies. If you were really out here, you could travel for millions of years and see almost nothing. Intergalactic space is so empty that there's less than one atom per cubic meter. No stars, no planets, no dust. Just the faint light of galaxies separated by incomprehensible distances. Some of these galaxies are spirals like the Milky Way. Others are elliptical, shaped like giant spheres of stars. Some are irregular, their shapes distorted by collisions with neighboring galaxies. Almost every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its center millions or billions of times the mass of our sun, but none as massive as the one we're traveling toward. The further we travel, the further back in time we're looking. Light from these distant galaxies left billions of years ago. We're seeing them as they were in the ancient past, not as they are today. Some of these galaxies might not even exist anymore. The light we're seeing could be from galaxies that have since merged with others or had their stars stripped away by gravity. We won't know for millions of years. Our destination lies in a region of space 
that from Earth appears in the constellation Coma Berenices. But it's not nearby like the stars in that constellation. It's billions of light years beyond them. When the light we're chasing began its journey, the universe was only three billion years old, billions of years before Earth even existed. If we could see the entire observable universe at once, galaxies would form a web-like pattern, long filaments and walls of galaxies surrounding enormous empty voids. This is the large-scale structure of the universe, shaped by dark matter and gravity over billions of years. Current estimates range from a few hundred billion to perhaps two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Each one, a cosmic city of stars. Most contain planets. Some possibly harbor life. Tun 618 was first noticed in 1957 by astronomers at the Tonantzintla Observatory in Mexico. They cataloged it as object number 618 in their survey. They thought it was a faint blue star. But it wasn't until 1970 that astronomer Marie Helene Ulrich measured its spectrum and discovered what it really was. Those emission lines were shifted far into the red, meaning it was incredibly distant. It wasn't a star. It was a quasar. Quasars are the brightest objects in the universe. They're powered by supermassive black holes, actively consuming matter. As gas and dust spiral into these black holes, the material heats up to millions of degrees and releases enormous amounts of energy. Tun 618 is one of the most luminous quasars ever discovered. It shines with the light of 140 trillion suns. That's thousands of times brighter than our entire Milky Way galaxy. Here's what makes it even more remarkable. We're seeing this quasar as it was over 10 billion years ago. A black hole this massive already existed when the universe was still young. Scientists are still trying to understand how it grew so large so quickly. To grow a black hole to 66 billion solar masses in just 3 billion years, it would need to consume matter almost continuously. There are theoretical limits to how fast black holes can grow. This object pushes against those limits. Some scientists think it formed from multiple smaller black holes merging together. Others believe it started as an unusually massive seed black hole formed from the direct collapse of enormous gas clouds in the early universe. The galaxies around us are becoming more numerous. We're approaching a region with higher galaxy density. This is common in the universe. Galaxies cluster together in groups and larger structures called superclusters. Our Milky Way is part of the local group, about 30 galaxies bound together by gravity. The local group is part of the Laniakea supercluster, containing about 100,000 galaxies. Our destination lies far beyond all of this. The galaxy we're approaching is completely overwhelmed by the quasar's light. The black hole at its center is so bright that it drowns out the billions of stars in that galaxy. From Earth, even with powerful telescopes, we only see the brilliant point of the quasar. But the galaxy exists, a massive galaxy with billions of stars orbiting that supermassive black hole at its center. Surrounding the quasar is an enormous nebula of glowing gas, stretching hundreds of thousands of light years across. We're now over 10 billion light years from the Milky Way. If we looked back, our home galaxy would be invisible, lost among billions of others. Earth, the Sun, everything humanity has ever known, reduced to nothing in the cosmic vastness. The light we're approaching left when the universe was a quarter of its current age. Dinosaurs wouldn't appear for another 10 billion years. Humans wouldn't exist for almost 13 billion years. And yet this black hole was already there, already massive, already consuming matter and shining across the universe. 
Ahead of us now, one point of light is growing brighter than the others. Brighter than any galaxy around it. That's Tun 618. The galaxy containing one of the most massive black holes ever discovered. Its center blazing with the light of the quasar, a beacon that has been shining for over 10 billion years. We've traveled across more than 10 billion light years of space to reach this point. And now, finally, we're approaching the galaxy itself. This massive structure has existed for billions of years, its central black hole consuming matter and powering one of the brightest objects in the universe. We're almost there. We're entering the galaxy now. This is a massive elliptical galaxy, home to hundreds of billions, possibly up to a trillion stars. Unlike spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies don't have distinct arms. Their stars orbit in all directions, creating a more spherical shape. This galaxy has existed for billions of years, likely growing larger by absorbing smaller galaxies over time. The quasar at the heart of this galaxy is so bright it drowns out the stars around it. From Earth, astronomers can see the quasar, but not the galaxy itself. The galaxy is there, but the black hole's light is too overwhelming. We're almost at the center now. There. Two massive jets shoot out from the poles, beams of particles and energy blasting away at nearly the speed of light. These jets stretch thousands of light years into space. This is how quasars work. Not all material falling toward the black hole crosses the event horizon. Some gets caught by powerful magnetic fields near the poles and gets ejected outward instead. The jets are powered by the black hole's spin and the magnetic fields in the accretion disk. They're so energetic, they can affect entire galaxies, heating gas and changing how stars form. That intense glow ahead is the accretion disk. Gas and dust spiraling into the black hole, heating to millions of degrees as it falls inward. The closer material gets to the event horizon, the hotter it becomes. The inner regions glow white hot. Farther out, the disk is cooler but still hotter than most places in the universe. The event horizon lies ahead, the boundary where nothing can escape. Its radius is about 1,300 astronomical units, over 40 times the distance from our Sun to Neptune. Time moves differently this close to the event horizon. The stronger the gravity, the slower time passes. Near the boundary, time nearly stops. This black hole weighs about 66 billion suns, roughly the same as all the stars in the Milky Way combined. And all that mass is packed into a region smaller than our solar system. Its gravity bends light itself. We can see parts of the accretion disk that should be hidden behind it because space is warped around the black hole. Cross the event horizon and there's no way back. Everything that falls in is pulled toward the singularity, where physics breaks down completely. This is the universe at its most extreme, where gravity is absolute, where time bends, and the rules of physics cease to exist. This is Tun 618.